your teleprompter create videos you're proud of. Easily trim your video by selecting the words where you want to start and end. Color your presentation with automatic subtitles and highlighting keywords. Add your brand logo. Add music for an emotional touch. Add your contact info on an animated business card on all your videos. Easily replace green screen with an image or a video loop. Stand out with a web page with your logo, your video at the center, and personalized button for visitors to interact. It's one tap to simultaneously upload your videos on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Always know what to say next with the Big View teleprompter. Hi, welcome to all of you. Welcome to today's workshop, How to Grow Your Revenue by Creating a Content Flywheel. Really great to have you all with us. And uh, on today's formula, as always, uh, we encourage you to uh, post your comments into the chat. Uh, you can put a cue before the comment if you want to post any questions for our speakers today. Uh, and we'll pick them up uh, during the course of the uh, uh, workshop. And we'll uh, pass them on to our speakers. Uh, today, we have a really special event for you today. We have two uh, real experienced speakers today. We have uh, Jim Fuchs, uh, who's the president of Fusion Marketing. Jim is a seasoned digital marketing consultant with over 30 years experience and a former U.S. Marine. And we have Jim's partner in crime, who is uh, Chris Stone. Chris has over 25 years of history in the music industry with Sony. Uh, he's a passionate entrepreneur uh, and he's a podcast expert and streaming expert. So we're going to have a learn a lot today uh, together. Uh, and um, I'm really, uh, really Great to have you with us today. So let us know where you're joining us from. We'd be happy to see in the comments where you guys are joining from. Uh, we'd like to see you all just post in the comments. Let us know if you have any questions or anything, uh, if you're big view users or not, uh, and see. let's see if we can bring you some quality content today. Without further ado, uh, I'd like to bring our two uh, uh, speakers today on board, uh, Jim and Chris, uh, so they can tell us a little bit about themselves. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks, Kevin. We appreciate that. Boy, I, 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 you used expert twice there. I'm, I don't know how to act now. <laughs> I, we're like looking at, who's he talking about? Who's he talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's us. Oh, God. Yeah, it's nice to be uh, on the show uh, with you. We're, uh, we're big fans and uh, have watched a number of workshops prior. And so those that are watching, uh, as Kevin said, ask questions because there's nothing that Jim and I love to do more than to solve people's problems live. In fact, we do it every time we can in the biggest mall in the world. Well, maybe not the biggest mall in the world, but one of the biggest malls, especially online, uh, which is Amazon uh, on our show. So we look forward to the workshop. We hopefully can solve people's problems live. Excellent. That sounds great. And Jim? What about you? Yeah, so I, I'm Jim Fuse. I'm the uh, president of Fusion Marketing. I like to do marketing the Marine Corps way. Why, you might ask, is because I did over 20 years as a United States Marine, retired as a lieutenant colonel. And so I bring that, you know, adapt and overcome mentality into the business world because I think that's where people get in their own way a lot of times because they're like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Well, you, you, you got to make you got to make those changes. You got to make those shifts. And we've seen that over the last three, four years. And, you know, things like video have become more and more important, but people are still like, oh, well, I don't know how to get started. Well, you know, part of it is just, just get started. And so I was fortunate to uh, meet uh, Chris Stone back in, I guess, what was it, Chris, like 2019, maybe 20, early 2020 before uh, everything went crazy. And uh, we connected and we were able to, uh, to come up with this uh, concept thanks to Amazon called uh, called deal casters and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about you know how that relates to what we're talking about today but uh, I hand it over to my uh, my good friend Chris let us know about him yeah I'm uh, Chris Stone I have a company called cast ahead and what we do is we work with motivated entrepreneurs to make a show because most time Kevin you you deal with entrepreneurs in your business a lot. Most of the time they want to know how all the stuff works. They don't want to have, they don't want to figure out how, you know, all the file names and all the places they need to be. They just want to show. And that's what I do for them. And of course I enjoy uh, also being the co-host of, of this thing called deal casters. And uh, we'd love to, you know, talk about that, but also the, the topic today, which is really how we utilize that show and how we, just turn it into what we call a content flywheel and be able to take all what we call all parts of the pig 
and utilize it in all of the places so that we can get found. Yeah. So, so how, how, did, how did you guys get into it? How did you get into the concept of using a content flywheel? And before we go to that, I just want to remind our, our, our audience today that we have a special giveaway. We have a three 30-minute sessions with Jim and Chris. Um, for those of you that want to um, uh, merit to, to be one of the, the lucky winners of the, the uh, sessions, please uh, send a mail to dealcasters at dealcasters.live. Uh, we'll put that into the chat regularly throughout the, um, throughout the workshop. And then send a mail to Chris and Jim uh, with the mail title, Big View, so they know where it's coming from. And they will choose our three winners from those of you that sent through emails for a fantastic uh, personalized training session with them. Uh, okay, so with, 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 without further ado, so, so how, let's, let's, let's just understand how you got, because I know today, you know, people talk about creating funnels for your social media sites and getting funnel to get your lead generation done. How is it that you came to use the concept of content flywheel and didn't go the regular route that people go today? Yeah, that's right. And I, you know, I can answer that really quickly and I'll roll it over to Jim to, to fill in the cracks because there's always some when I get to the end of it. That's why, that's why we're, we're better together than we are uh, alone. But we actually started this show on Amazon. Jim and I have collective businesses as remote producers and we do this for other people. And we love to do it and that's why, that's why we're doing it. But we knew that we needed to have a show together. So we came up with that concept and launched on Amazon before anybody knew what Dealcasters was. You'd Google Dealcasters, and by and large, what you would get would be a bunch of like, oh, those caster wheels that you put on the bottom of amplifiers to roll them <laughs> around or whatever. Like, hey, there's a deal on these, right? And so that's when we first started. And I was like, Jim, this is a problem. Because when you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, or you're a brand, it's one thing if somebody were to Google you and they find out you're like, I don't know, an ax murderer or something like that. That's terrible, right? But what's worse is they don't find you. Like, so we had to get found. And so we knew that, it, you know, we had to be in all the places, but we needed a place because we were on the quote unquote rented land of Amazon that we needed a spot for people to land. And, uh, but we wanted to drive them to Amazon as well. So our show was called Dealcasters Live because we put that on Amazon. And Jim and I were in a conversation. We're like, can we just buy the domain dealcasters.live? Sure enough, we could. And, you know, it was $2.99. So it broke our bank at the time. And we went broke. We went $3 in the, in the red. And we bought dealcasters.live. And that supercharged our SEO. It basically, every time we did something... So in this case, we'll create a uh, subdomain called bigview.dealcasters.live, which is easy to do with any domain that you buy, and we'll redirect to this show. So at any point in time, if we ever want to promote this particular show, there's a spot on the internet where we can drive to it. And all of our content drives to where we want it to go. It's always a... Uh, great user experience when somebody sees an interview with us and Kevin and they go, oh, that's a great interview. I want to I want to find out what books he's got behind him or whatever. And if you click on it and it sends them to some funnel or it sends them to something that they didn't want, you've disqualified yourself as a trusted piece of content on the Internet. And so we got this domain and now we just the list, Kevin, of subdomains that we have under Dealcasters Live is insane. We do it for products. We do it for our guests. We do it for things like this just because it's a way for us to create this, uh, you know, flywheel, so to speak, of content that will drive to where we want it to drive. Yeah, and I so think, I yeah, I was going to say, ahead. and I think what was unique is that when we started this show, it was just on Amazon. We didn't have deal caster socials we didn't, we didn't have anything we were literally you know i had my twitter account for fusion marketing is how we got approved and so we started to create the socials a piece at a time and so then we started saying well now we got to start putting content out there or people aren't going to go to those things so what happened was we started taking a look at like oh we can put you know we, we started doing product videos for amazon and so 
we started figuring out, hey, we can now start putting this out there. And here's the other thing. If you're an Amazon influencer or somebody, you know, desiring to become an Amazon influencer, they want you to drive people from what they call offsite, off of Amazon to Amazon. So that kind of became our idea. Like, how do we get people that are not on Amazon to Amazon? And that was by creating this content flywheel. And we started to go, even in places you may not think of, but for very uh, strategic reasons. We, as an example, have a LinkedIn company page for deal casters. Right. In fact, right now, uh, you know, and it doesn't mean, you know, jump off of uh, YouTube and go there, but we're actually live streaming this on LinkedIn, right? How do we do that? We had to get followers, right? To get 150 followers on LinkedIn, you can go live on LinkedIn as a business. So that's, that's something for people to consider because part of who we're looking to work with as a brand is these, you know, big companies like Sure and things like that. So they're out there on LinkedIn. They're not necessarily on Facebook. And the Facebook algorithm isn't necessarily friendly to people putting links in there. So that was kind of our idea. Like, hey, let's start putting our content out on these other places. And that's what has started to drive traffic not only to Amazon, but people to wanting to work with us. So, so, so am I correct in saying that you're adapting your strategy to your content and by you know getting leverage from the different different landing pages if you could call them or different sites that you, you're directing them to and maintaining control of that you can actually you know get leverage for for your your amazon program at the same time yeah i i, I look at it like this you know when when we go live on Amazon, we, we will interview someone and have a podcast, but we're in the middle of the mall, so to speak. And so inevitably, um, what we do and why we call it live solving versus live selling is, you know, lots of times products are presented as solutions uh, to, to issues that someone has. Like, oh, wow, this virtual background looks really cool. Like, how did you, how, you know, what are you doing? What are the lights that you use? And so we're we're actually like training people and, you know, uh, doing what we do in terms of consulting and how to talk into a microphone. And, you know, all, you, all, you inevitably get the questions like, what microphone should I buy? What this will you do? And you can answer those, but you also want to talk about what room they're in and, you know, like help people solve their problems. And sometimes it's, you're not in a situation where uh, it leads to a sale, so to speak, but eventually it does. And so, you know, what we've done is we said, okay, well, there's all this content and there's a lot, there's lots of people that are watching right now and they go live and they just leave it. They just leave it up there or they record a YouTube video and they just put it somewhere and they don't use those elements of that show to be able to say, Hey, there was something that was said here and there was something that was said here. They don't, they may not have the time to do it, but we use, and we're happy to talk about the software and all of the stuff that we do to say, hey, there's a way to transcribe your show. There's a way to take elements from that show and then just use all of those elements to drive to the same thing. And it's, you know, it's rented land that you're driving to um, because it, it, you know, at this point, Amazon could say, you know what, we're not doing this anymore. That's okay because we can drive them somewhere else, right? Because we have a redirect that we've built for all of that content. So if the rented land goes away, we're still in control of where it goes because we have redirects that we've used yeah. in all the content throughout the years that, you know, the two years or just over two years that we've been doing this thing. We have control over where it lands. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. And in fact, it resonates a lot with, with, with our philosophy on the content side as well. You know, when we do the workshops, uh, when we started out, we, we you know we we're just finding our feet perhaps a little bit in the same sense that you guys were at Dealcasters. But today we try and take the workshop, and from the workshop, obviously we use the workshop as a, as a, as an integral part itself. But in addition to that, we try and, and and roll a blog out of the workshop, roll a podcast out of the workshop. So we we're using the yeah. content, we're repurposing, um, and even product wise, you know our, our trim features really there to to enable users to cut down their videos into smaller chunks. And take out bits that they can use for for you know for repurposing, posting on different platforms, getting more more distance because um, 
I mean, I, I think from our experience, you know, um, the life cycle is also very important. And I think maybe you guys want to get a little bit into the life, life cycle of the flywheel and, you know, what, what the objectives are, what you aim to do, uh, and how you, actually, how you actually do that. Yeah. So, I mean, part of it too is I, I want to say I heard the other day that it, uh, it's, you got to catch someone's attention in seven seconds with a video or they're, they're off somewhere else. And so I think part of what, you know, we've figured out and, and Chris can go in a lot more detail on this is in creating this content flywheel is like, he, he kind of knows like, okay, you know, like we just had a, uh, you know, loss on our show, a, an amazing creator. And he said some just epic stuff or, you know, uh, and, and so he takes that piece and it starts out, right? That's what you're hearing. It's not like, you know, hey, welcome to our show. Here's because people like, I don't got time for that. You know, get to the meat, get to the meat. And we've even learned with the stuff we're doing with product videos. Like we don't sit there and it's like, you know, hey, this is Jim. And today I'm going to talk about this camera. I just say, we're talking about the Sony ZV-E10 and we get right into it, right? We just don't, you know, people are, in fact, someone said this the other day and I thought it was really, uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 and maybe it's a little bit obvious, but you don't think about it. It's like they came to your channel or your video because they wanted to learn something. They don't need an introduction, right? You leave yeah. the introduction for your, you know, maybe your, your first video, like on YouTube, you can have that. This is what the channel's about. But if they're watching your other stuff, you don't need to keep reintroducing yourself. Get to the point, okay. get people engaging. Yeah, the life cycle, to, more specific to your question, Kevin, is I look at it as forever. And I, I know that's like, oh, come on, really? You know, like maybe nine years from now, the, 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 things don't look like this, whatever. But I, I look at it in terms, if you think about like today's show, we, we, you know, you guys have a great uh, process and planning and we, we had a meeting beforehand. We have all of this stuff, right? But we treat this with importance. We show up and, and we deliver this content and we do everything that we can to make this the best possible, most valuable thing that we can in this moment, no matter what happened, you know, the day of or, or whatever, because we believe that eventually, even after I'm not here on this earth, I might have said something in a piece of content that somebody watches and it impacts them. Like, I'm now going to write my book or I, now I, I got this tip from this person and I, you know, I got this and I got this. And so I think if, if you think about it like that, then you don't think about a piece of content that was done yesterday and just leave it up on the vine. Like we're constantly taking all of this content and spicing it up and splicing it up and transcribing it and pulling down this stuff. And it's making an impact on people years. I mean, we've got content, Kevin, that pe we get co uh, comments from people and it's from two years ago on a book that somebody else wrote. And it's like, okay, that was cool. These people are commenting on these things years from now. And somebody will say, when, when did you have time to do that? I was like, I did that two years ago. Like it's not. And so I think a lot of times content entrepreneurs, when they're putting together their stuff, they're just putting it together for this. And then they're moving on to the next thing. And they're putting it together for this and they're moving it on to the next thing. And I think your content is more valuable than you think about it. If you find a way to create a process with, you know, pieces of software, um, especially what's going on with AI and everything, but you, you have some sort of transcription software that you can pull in and that helps you to identify those things that are going to be impactful to the audience that's already resonating with what you're doing. And then you schedule it out and then sit back and respond to people and be social while they're being impacted by it. So absolutely. So it's, it's really the relevance of the content. You try and look into the content itself and extract those, those elements that are relevant or going to be relevant or may, you know, may just be a, a, a kind of a, 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 a light bulb moment for, for possible viewers. Yes. Absolutely. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that, you know, I, I, I get deep on this whole legacy thing, but I feel like, you know, when, when you get comments back from people and you help, you've helped them, you're like, Hey, real talk. I started my podcast because I watched the casters and I bought two pairs of headphones and returned the other one because they, they, they said, Hey, you know, Amazon's got a good return policy. 
And you might find that these are more comfortable on your ears. They're about the same. They're about the same price, whatever. Buy both of them and then return one that you don't want. And they're like, God, I'm so glad you said that. And now I'm using that information. And then you build trust with that audience. And, you know, you, you're just being yourself. You're just, you know, telling people, you know, how it is. And they're learning. And, and hopefully someday they can, you know, we'll, we'll get even more information for people who have, you know, started something in their career as a content entrepreneur. So, so when you guys are, are, are preparing for, your, to, for your, your show or preparing to create content, are you taking a, a perspective that we have to find out, you know, kind of what is the, 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 the know-how, what is the value around the content that can be of, of use to the audience that we're going to present the content or the product for that matter, uh, would that be would that be like one of the, the elements that you're looking at when you're looking at the creation process? Definitely. So, so as an example, if we know we're going to go live and say it's just going to be me and Chris and we're doing a show about like helping people talk about live streaming uh, tools, or if we're talking about podcasting, we will sometimes intentionally we may have a product that we haven't talked about before, and so when we're doing the the live stream, the you know the thirty minute to half hour show. We know that, okay, when I'm talking about, as an example, this, this Shure uh, MV7X microphone, we're going to talk specifically about the features and benefits and then make that intentional pause so that then Chris can go in later and he can cut that out and we can actually turn that into a clip. And so as an example, with a product like BigView, we can then take that, put that piece of the video in, You know, we can turn it into vertical if we want to, and then we can caption it. Because I did see that one of the questions like, well, how does this relate to Big View? So Big View is one of those tools that you can use in order to create those clips. Now, the the piece that the revenue generating piece that people are probably wondering about is, well, we have affiliate links, right? We put the affiliate link into that clip off of Amazon, and we also, you know, you know, disclose that we're an affiliate because you know that's an FTC thing, and that will get people to click and go to Amazon and make that purchase. Now you can do that with other affiliate type links. So it's not just something that you have to be on Amazon to do this. And we want to educate people. A lot of our videos are educational, right? We don't sit there and say, buy this now, right? We'll even do comparison videos that are not related to our live shows. Like we'll say, you know, here's what your iPhone, you know, I did a video, here's what your iPhone sounds like microphone. Here's what it sounds like when you use a Rode Wireless Go 2. So you can hear the difference, right? It's a short video. It's impactful. It helps people make decisions. So that's, I think, part of our strategy is, yes, we're very intentional when it comes to that. And, and even as an example, if Chris and I are both doing videos about the same product, we'll say, all right, Chris, what, what piece are you going to do? What piece am I going to do? So we're not creating the same exact thing. Yeah. And, and one of the great ways to, you know, a lot, a lot of times people, Kevin, you know, this will have, you know, they'll, they'll get stuck on what they should do content uh, on. Right. And some of it has to do with that imposter syndrome and they look and they go, well, you know, so-and-so already did this product video or so-and-so already did a video based on eye contact with the PlexiCam or somebody already did, you know, and so they, they think that they have to do something that's completely different. They've got their own voice, but one little trick that we've utilized for um, you know, creating product videos, as, a, as an example, is, and anyone can do this, if it's a product video that you're, uh, you're doing, like any microphone that you've got or any pair of headphones that you've got or you know, not even a tech-related item, maybe something that gets rid of fruit flies in your kitchen, you go to that item on Amazon, scroll all the way down, and you have all these questions that people want to know before they buy a piece of product, mm -hmm. before they want to buy. And then all these questions get upvoted. So you're automatically seeing the top questions that people want before they make a purchase decision. And so that is, if there, if there isn't a reason why, and everybody thinks, well, you have to do an unboxing video, and then you have to do some sort of demo video. That's not necessarily yeah. the case because you know, some of these boxes are just like boxes. Like who cares? It's in a piece of plastic when you pull it out. Like who, who, who cares? Find out what they do care about. Find out what your audience wants. Find out what solution you can provide to them. And in this case, they want to know 
how long the warranty is. Was it built in the United States or uh, is this a good microphone for podcasting? And if it's upvoted 48 times, create a video on that. Okay, excellent. I'd, I'd actually like just to, to, I'm going to give you guys a bit of scope. I'm just going to check out the chat at the moment. Sure. I'll let you guys go ahead Love so it. we can see what we've got some questions coming in that we can maybe bring through to you. Yeah, I, I did see that. So some people have this question, well, what is the content flywheel? And I think right. the best right. way I would describe it, Chris, you know, if I miss anything just like he said i i would he'll he'll uh he'll fill in so say as an example for us the flywheel starts with the live show or the video but we'll go with the live show first when that show is done we turn that live show into a podcast so that becomes one of the spokes off of that original content to clarify let me let me fill in a crack there for you jim and i'll, I'll yeah. roll it back when we say podcast in this case that means audio only going on the audio players like apple podcasts and spotify and and google podcast there is a video podcast right but one of the components of the flywheel is an audio podcast sorry jim go ahead no, no that's good that's a that's a great point then we sit there and by you know whether it's using technology or just you know remembering different parts of the thing, and so it usually ends up being technology. It could be big view, it could be descript. We will then have these pieces that are you know short enough to be on things like Instagram Reels or TikTok or these other spots, or we'll even post them to LinkedIn. Um, that we will then those are kind of the other spokes. It goes to each of those social platforms. So, but the idea being that each one of those pieces of content drives people back to that original, right? We're, we're going back to, uh, you know, that original interview, you know, the interview that uh, we might have did. We did an interview with um, um, Mario uh, from Shure, right? We were talking about Shure microphones, all these different microphones I have. So that became a podcast, right? But then we also did these clips and one clip might have been about a certain microphone. And so if you clicked it, it would either take you to the microphone or we'd say, if you want to see the whole interview, boom, here's your choices. So we give people those choices. The other piece of that is Chris, like you said, creates these redirects, right? We want to make it easy for people. You know, we, we've we actually got two uh, ways to redirect people. It's like if you want to see our storefront on Amazon, you go to dealcasters.shop. If you want to go see our last live show, it's dealcasters.live, but we get specific. So we've always got a way to bring people back to, for us, Amazon is where we want to bring people back to because that's where they make the purchases. That's where we generate the revenue. And so I know people are like, you know, that, that to me is our example is, is taking each show and repurposing it on these other platform channels to get them back to where Amazon wants them to go, which is back to amazon.com. And I'll just dovetail a little bit on that, Kevin, because I mentioned sure, earlier right. when we when we created the dealcasters.live or when we bought the domain, I should say, and then we started creating all of the content around that. When we first started, you couldn't find us on the internet. Now you get you you're going through 10 pages of stuff of our stuff before you even see some sale for the caster wheels that go under the amplifiers or whatever, because We've created all of this content and that's what the flywheel does. We're, we're not here to try and make money. I want to make that clear. We're not here to try and make money. We do, but we're, that's, that was never our original intention. Our original intention was to create a show on Amazon to be able to demonstrate what we do as remote producers. So as one stream of revenue, um, we get commission from Amazon based on products that people will buy while they're watching our show or when they click a product video. All of those things are our commission, which is in affiliate revenue and all of those things. And as, as an entrepreneur, a content entrepreneur, you want to have multiple streams of revenue because this is rented land. At any point in time, Amazon could go, deal casters, we don't want you anymore or whatever. But I know that when you Google us, you will find us. You will never not find us because right. we have right. we have things everywhere, and that's really what the content wheel um, flywheel, I should say, has uh, has done for us. So you, you know the passion. We definitely can see the passion. The passion comes through when you guys present. That's definitely it's fun. There, you know, it, I can, we can see that w without a doubt. Um, and and as well, you know, just not just having the different you know aspects of your flywheel with different content. Each each aspect of the content 
is geared towards a specific yes. point or audience of that. And, and you're creating, you know, just uh, uh, that, 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 that regenerative system and the brand is there all the time. So, you know, you're bringing them back to, you're sending them to, to Amazon if they do want to engage in the purchase of product. But at the same time, you're building a brand. As you say, said, if you're not doing it for Amazon today and you're doing it for uh, uh, whatever, a different uh, company tomorrow, <laughs> then, uh, then you've still got the basis. You've, you've built something which has right. intrinsic value. So I, right. I want to just bounce off a, a question uh, from, from Michael Pratt because Michael was asking, you know, how is this relevant for Big View? So I, I, I want to just reformulate that a little bit. I think let's rather look at a more generic type of case and say, how is, how is this relevant for people that are selling services as opposed to selling products? Mm. Uh, Jim, do you want to add? Yeah. I, so as an example, what some people are doing on Amazon is they're creating shows. I, I work with a lady, uh, Denise Lipka, that she's a, an artist. So she's teaching people how to paint on Amazon. And so she's not sitting there and, you know, selling anything. She's teaching classes. There's people teaching other types of classes. And so what they're doing is they're showing the products that are related to that in the, uh, what they call the carousel. So maybe you're a, a thought leader and you want to interview authors, right? And part of that is people realize, oh, I can work with this person. So they might have books in there. So they're, they're book authors. I, I think... It's more about thinking like, how can I creatively talk about what I do as opposed to like, you know, oh, I'm a coach and I'm looking to get more coaching clients on Amazon. Because the reality is, are people going to come to Amazon looking for coaching clients? Probably not. But maybe you're, I don't know, a landscaper. I, I mean, part of this really comes down to you're educating people, right? You're educating people about ways to do things and oh, by the way, you just happen to be using a product that's on Amazon. I mean, there's people that do uh, fitness classes. I mean, there's there's just there's just such a wide variety, uh, you know. So I I mean, I think services can be tough, um, you know. And I think sometimes, right? That's the thing. Chris and I don't treat Amazon like QVC, right? We have a conversation. We talk about how to use things, not you need to buy this thing. And I think that's kind of the difference between maybe us and some of the other creators. Chris, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I was just say it's 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 about building trust, Kevin. So, yeah. you know, you know, when people when people are looking for remote producers and somehow they come across Jim Fuse or Chris Stone and they're like, "Okay, now I've seen these guys, right? Oh, I, you know, I I know these these guys know their stuff." And and I, these are shows like our show becomes a, it's really a sandbox for us to play in. Like we, this is what we can do for you, you know, and we can dial it down and do a show that's, that's definitely for your brand. But like, we're going to, you know, here's all of the bells and whistles. And if you want half the bells and whistles, we could do that show for you. But it's really about building that trust for you. And, you know, to Jim's point, you know, you don't necessarily have to go live on video and do exactly what you do. You can cr you create trust by creating a show uh, for something. You know, there's plenty of people that are, you know, they make money on keynote speaking, but they create a podcast where they interview interesting people. And eventually it's like, oh, geez, I subscribe to this person's podcast. Yeah. They're a public uh -huh. speaker? I, I mean, I had a great example of that. I mean, um, I, I, I like my music and, uh, and uh, I, I know Sammy Hager who used to ah. be the front man for Van Halen. The he Red Rocker. He started doing a show. He started doing a show where he was interviewing all these, these people. For, he knew these people for industry, so he said to himself, let me go and interview them. He went and interviewed them. And to all these amazing, amazing... And so, you know, I think they're, 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 really that's a, that's an amazing piece of, of, of advice that you've given there. Yeah. And, and credibility, you know, just trust, credibility. It, it just resonates absolutely, and you get found more, and and you might listen to more Sammy Hagar music now, and drink more of his tequila. I guess I don't know, but uh, yeah, the Red Rocker—that's a great example. True, absolutely. Great. So let's just let's see if we can pick any up uh, any questions from the audience that we've entered in. Uh, okay, let me just see. 
Well, I saw I saw a question about is this go run it, go run it. for Amazon only, and, and I would say no. Here's what Chris and I have learned over. It's really almost hard to believe, Chris. Next month is three years since we started this journey, but wow. live selling, which we like to call live solving, is growing beyond Amazon. There's companies like eStreamly and uh, I'm, I'm a, there's another one that has a Shopify app where people are live streaming on their websites, right? So take that live stream that you do on your website that you own and repurpose that content to get people to come back to your website. It, it's, it's just a, happens to be that our fundamental first stop is Amazon, but you could really apply that to anywhere that you're creating video, right? Because this is about video creation first, right? Chris and I do video first. We're not sitting there trying to write a bunch of blog posts. That's, that's not to say, and Kevin, you talked about this, how you guys take a video and then turn it into a blog post, right? That's what technology is allowing us to do. So I think, you know, if you've got something to sell or a service to offer, where is your, if you want to call it your social proof, where are you putting something? Because Chris and I sometimes will have people say, oh, well, we'd like to be on your podcast. One of the first things we do is we go look and see, well, let's see if we can find somewhere where they've spoke before on video. What does their setup look like? And that, that can be a, uh, a way for us to basically, you know, say they're not qualified for where we are right now with our business for us to, to do that. So you, that's where I think people need to think. And so where does Big View help, right? You've got that teleprompter uh, part of the app where you can sit there and look into the camera and make good video that comes across and a good message and you've got good eye contact with the camera. Then you can also repurpose that, right? Take that 30 seconds out of that five minutes you talked and turn that into a YouTube short and bring people back to want to learn more about you. So I think this idea that, oh, this only applies to Amazon couldn't be further from the truth. This, this applies to all businesses. I, I've been encouraging businesses in my community. It's like, hey, you need to start a YouTube channel. You need to put video out there because people are searching for solutions to their problems because Chris and I are problem solvers. We want to help businesses solve their problems. Yeah. And Kevin, I know there's a lot of questions here about the, uh, you know, it's, I guess more semantics than anything, the, the, the term content flywheel and how to create that. I think getting past the word flywheel we just kind of yeah. use that i mean that's a nice headline right but sure. it's generally just taking a piece of content usually longer form content right like this like today's workshop for example and taking that and doing what we call like using all parts of the pig we just take that piece of content and we put it into a transcription service there's a bunch of them out there uh you know i don't know if we're restricted to name or not name what we use or what we love but we're happy to, well, to you can go ahead that. okay so we ahead. use descript and that's that's something that uh, we feel like you know serves us, but there are plenty of great transcription services that vary in price that may be best for you. So certainly test those out. But we, that's where it starts is we, we pull it in there. And when you can look at a written piece of content, so if you're looking at a transcription from a video, you can very quickly, some, and, and some people, you know, are, you know, Okay, I can't go back to a video, an hour long video and watch and think about, does, is this, does this piece work? Does this piece yeah. work? When you're looking at a transcription, you basically want to say, hey, here's a nugget. This I can use. And then you just pull it and you just go through it. And pretty sure it, you know, like an hour long piece of content takes me about 10 minutes to go through. I do it for myself. I do it for my clients. And then you've all of a sudden you've got 12, 15 pieces or nuggets that you can use from a video perspective. And you can use them on nine, 10 different types of platforms in varying ways to use it. And there's other you know, you can use repurpose, you can use big view, you can use, there's just all kinds of different things. Lately is another um, uh, AI related scheduler that we use. And so when you do that, that's just one piece of, that's just one hour of an interview. And if you are consistent as a content entrepreneur, as a podcaster, as a live streamer, and you're doing maybe one show every other week, Imagine how much you have. I think about this story, and I know Victor Antonio just wrote a book called Mastering the Upsell, and it's about, it's that old um, 
story about um, the man who found diamonds in the backyard, didn't know that they were there. And all of a sudden it was like, we went all to the ends of the earth to look for all of these diamonds and they were just in the backyard. That's what your content is. This is stuff that if you take and pull it apart, you can find nuggets in there that are you, you've already done and don't just put it out there and let it sit. Yeah. Yeah. And even years ago, I mean, we, we've got posts, Kevin, that go up that we've done two and a half years ago because I did what I just talked about, chopped it up and scheduled it. And it's making impact on people. And that's, that's how you create the flywheel. Yeah. And that's, uh, that, that's something that uh, as well, that, you know, part of our, our product team, uh, perhaps uh, one of our, our marketing people will be joining us later, but part of our product team's philosophy is really to look where, where's the problem? What are the problems we're trying to solve uh, that we can help people save time? And, and really our, our whole platform is really oriented. If you look at Big View's features, you know, teleprompter, uh, word trim to trim videos, uh, automatic captions, automatically posting to, to social media sites. It's really to enable people to save time on that and to, to get the content, to repurpose the content. Uh, so really, I, I do really get that. Um, we've also had like uh, some questions on, you know, where, where does somebody who's starting out, where do they start out? You know, where's the starting point? How, you know, not everybody has the experience that you guys have had previously and they may want to, you know, get involved in creating some kind of a platform and building their own content flywheel. What, what would you guys recommend? Well, I think part of the challenge, right, is kind of like, where is your audience, right? And you get all this advice of, oh, you should be on Facebook. Oh, you should be on Instagram. Oh, you should be on TikTok. But you really got to understand your audience. I saw someone earlier talk about, well, I have an older demographic, right? And they're maybe not on some of the, you know, the, the newest, latest and greatest. That's where a newsletter could come in handy, right? Create that email marketing. That That is definitely something that we are looking at doing more of that or even creating a LinkedIn newsletter, which you can do off of your LinkedIn company page once you reach 150 followers. And then LinkedIn emails that out to all your subscribers. So I think it, you know, I don't think there's a right answer like you should start here. I think it's more about... Uh, making those decisions, testing it, right? Chris and I are big about testing things and it, and it's like, and it's okay. If you're not getting that action on Facebook or Instagram, well, that's maybe that's not where they're at and that's okay. You know, and with YouTube, right? YouTube is going to take time, right? YouTube rewards consistency. It, re, you know, and even if you upload a bunch of videos, it doesn't mean you're going to get a bunch of subscribers on the channel. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to say this, this, this whole idea that everybody can be a content creator is not true. Hmm. Everybody can attempt to be a content creator, but it takes work. It sure. takes continuous learning Absolutely. and continuing to improve yourself. Cause you'll see people like, well, I've uploaded all these videos and nobody's watching them. Are they good videos? Have you had someone objectively look at your content and say, is it worth their time? Hmm. And I think that's, part of the thing that nobody likes to talk about at times is, you know, and, and, you know, Chris and I'll even say, go, if you go look at our first videos back in, uh, when we started, we would like, we cringe, right. But we are constantly working at improving ourselves and we encourage others to do the same. I love yeah, that. And I would also say, I mean, Jim talked about consistency, which is just, I mean, it's so hard to hear sometimes and I, you know, but patience a part, uh, you know, is, is a huge deal. It's not going to happen overnight, folks. It's not going to, you're not going to wake up like, like this. You're, you're just not. And, you know, we didn't, and we're happy to play you our first video. If you want to watch it, we leave it up. It's, it's everywhere you want to watch. And every once in a while, Kevin, will go back and, and watch it and listen to it and cringe and go, okay, okay. We've, you know, now, now we got to get better from where we're at now. Right. It's not, you know, we're not going to pull it down because that's not, that's part of, you know, I know it's a cliche, but it's part of the journey. And I, and I believe that, you know, if, if I'm going to give anybody else a tip on this is everything you do needs to be on video. Everything you do. I don't care if you're just recording your audio podcast, put on your, uh, you know, turn on your uh, camera, your iPhone, like whatever it is. Make sure it's on video because you're going to be able to use that. People are going to want to see you. 
as well as hear you. And when you use software like Big View and you're able to make eye contact, a big part of what Jim and I do when we make our product videos and why when people are watching this right now, they can see me look at in the eyes with you is because, you know, eye contact is huge. It's huge. Yeah. If if the whole time I was doing this and I'm looking off to the side, they're gonna be like, why is this guy looking over there? I'm here. So it's yeah. it's important that you develop those reps and you you continue to put in that that work and all of a sudden you're you will get better because your second show is gonna be better than your first show. Sure. Your third is going to be better than your second, and you're just going to be building blocks to eventually you're going to you're going to be there. And I hope that helps. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just want to say uh, uh, that that really uh, you know rings true with myself. Um, I remember when when we started out and uh, started making videos myself, and you know making videos in front of the camera, you can see the results. It can be a very very awakening, if not frightening, experience. Um, <laughs> you know, seeing yourself, hearing how you come mm -hmm. out on the audio. Um, and it's, it's really, is it, uh, you know, secondly, it's, it's a learning experience, you know, and like you say, get out there, do it, repeat the process. The more you repeat the process, yes. um, you know, the better you're going to get. And, uh, and it's just, it's just a matter of, 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 I mean, I'm sure you guys invest a lot of time and efforts in spite of your, your the skills that you have already. Uh, into that. Well, yeah. Um, and Jim, and Jim talked about it earlier, surround yourself with people. They're going to, they're going to help you and tell you the truth. Like sometimes that's not your family and that sometimes that's not your friends, right? Yeah. Like, listen, I really want to work on this video. I want you to tell me what, not what I want to hear, because what I, what I would like to do is I'd like to get better. So tell me, what is it? Is it eye contact? Am I saying, uh, too much? Am I saying, you know, too much? Jim and I, we sharpen the saw constantly. Jim will go, hey, Chris, I watched that uh, interview you did. It was great, but I did notice this. And I'll do the same with him. And it's because we want to get better at this. And we work collectively, but we will work for on each other's individual businesses because we know that we're inspired to do better individually. So surround yourself with people that will help you do that. Yeah, I think, I think Chris, you've got a tough sparring partner, a lieutenant colonel from the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris is pretty tough himself. He he doesn't pull any punches. Jim's a big that's... teddy bear, Kevin. <laughs> okay, good. I'd like to actually like to bring in in, in our, our head of marketing to join us now Ooh. to bring a little bit oh. in about a little bit of a perspective and perspective. So I'd like you all to welcome Donna Howards from our marketing team. Awesome. Hey, Donna. Right. Welcome aboard, Donna. Hey. hey, Jim. Hey, Chris. Hey, Kevin. Hello to Bridget and Regina and everyone else who's in the audience with us today. Um, it's just some great, great content. I loved hearing about it. Um, and specifically, you know, I think people were asking, you know, how does this tie into Big View? And um, in my role, part of what I do as a marketing manager is be in touch with our affiliates, right? A lot of Big View's audience are people who are thought leaders, not necessarily content creators, by the way, people who are thought leaders in the real estate space, people who are thought leaders in the coaching space, um, people who are, you know, just people who are thought leaders in whatever industry they're in. Um, and they're constantly thinking, okay, um, you know, how do I turn this into revenue, right? Like, how do I monetize on what I'm doing? And how do I help my audience? Um, so what you guys were talking about is, is creating this content flywheel and creating the type of content that will allow them to share tools that they love, right? Um, and specifically, we're talking about Big View. Does that, I mean, does that make sense to you guys? You? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think... And I have a friend I recently talked to that's a realtor. I, I think one of the things, and this is where Big View can be very helpful, is right, create that video, right? If on LinkedIn, 10 minutes or less, right? Don't need to go live. I think that right there sometimes scares people. Oh, I, I don't want to go live. So record it, right? You can hit delete and do it over and do it over and do it over. But once you get that message where you want it, and that's where I think using Big View. And having the uh, the captions right, put it out there on LinkedIn, telling people here's what's going on in our local real estate market or whatever. Or here's what I think is important. You know, when you're getting into the coaching industry, create a series of videos and release them and and engage with other people. I, I think the other thing, you know, and that's where Big View can be very helpful. But I think the other thing that people uh, get too caught up in it's not always about just creating content it's engaging with other people's content and if you do more of that i think you'll see more success as well 
Yeah, and I would yeah. just add to the, uh, to what Jim said there, Donna, and that is, you know, it's it's powerful that the affiliate program is for users, right? So it it's it, you know, Jim and I get approached by brands all of the time. And they want to send us free stuff and give us free with this, that, or the other. We say no more than we say yes because we because we, you know we want to be able to have people trust us when they say, "Hey, uh, what do you suggest is the best this for this?" And so we can say, for us, we use this because it helps us do this, or we use a few things or whatever. So I think it's really important for someone who is a big view user or is some someone who is an affiliate is a part of this affiliate to be able to say, hey, listen, I use this. Here's how I use it. Here's how this might be able to help you. You're not saying, here, click on this and you're going to go into my funnel and now you're going to be, you know, you're going to get all my content. You're just saying, hey, I hope this helps you. Here's here's a piece of software that I use that helps me do this, that, or the other. It if you look at it from that standpoint, it's not like, hey, I'm doing this so that I can make money. If you say, I'm doing this so I can help people, the money will come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the truth is, when we look at our affiliate program, and like we have a fantastic affiliate program, people are earning commission. You know, as long as, as the people that they're referring are, um, are paying customers, they'll still be getting refer referral commission. So it's a fantastic program. But what is important for us is when people sign up for, as affiliates, for them to really believe in our product, right? Like we believe in them telling, and we see that the most successful affiliates are people who actually stand behind Big View. They use Big View, they love Big View, and they're able to, you know, and because they have that trust and because they have that brand authority, you know, this is just another piece of that brand authority, basically. People, they're, they being able to say, this is what I use, and here's how you can use it and become better at what you're doing, you know, make, create better content just like I am because I do use it. So like you said, it's really creating that trust and not just putting yourself out there, you know, sell this, buy this, you right. know, you need this, but this is what I use and here is how this can give you added value. And I really do encourage, I know that we have some, you know, diehard big view users with us today. I encourage you right now, just go into our website, you know, log into your desk, click on your profile picture, you know, become an affiliate, um, you know, we have a great, you know, I'm in touch with all the affiliates. We, we really believe in a long-term partnership with them. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, the reason why we found out about Big View is through uh, Terry Brock and Gina Carr, Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. I know they're in the, in the chat as well. And that's how we yeah. found out about it is, yep. uh, is that they've just been such huge proponents of Big View. And because we're such, you know, huge fans of theirs, we're like, well, we got to check this out. Exactly. Definitely. Exactly, exactly. It's the people that know Big View the best that really become our, our most trusted affiliates. And so I'll just repeat because I see we have a question from Nicole. How do I become an affiliate of Big View? So just please notice we put we did put the FAQ in the chat here. And also just log into your Big View. You know, you need to be a paying subscriber, but log into your affiliate profile into your uh, Big View profile and you will see become an affiliate on the left. Um, it's a really, really simple process, and we're in touch with you all along the way. And I really do feel that, that what we spoke about today in the workshop, creating that content flywheel, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you guys spoke about really thinking of your content and being um, intentional about your content, but also in a way, th this idea of repurposing content, I mean, it makes things a little bit easier, right? Like you don't have to be everywhere all the time, right? You need to create good content and then see how you use it forward. That's right. You know, put it out there and you would be surprised at the comments that come in months later from somebody who's been impacted by it. So why not, you know, create a system around it so that uh, you can, you know, then be social by going to these social media networks and responding to these people as opposed to just being sort of a, a trumpet of, of, of content and then like not doing anything with it. So. Yeah. And I mean, something else you guys spoke about was understanding what your audience is looking for. Like, how can this tool help you? So, I mean, people will create videos, you know, how to use a teleprompter, right? How do I read it? How do I, you know, what should I be looking at? Um, you know, how to add captions, what type of captions should I use? Those are really, really great examples of videos that you could be creating about Big View, um, you know, as part of this program and, and as giving your, and basically giving your audience the value that they're looking for and the reason they're coming to see you and to watch you and the reason they trust you. So I think just like what you guys are, you know, what you're doing in Amazon, do you think that could be, you know, kind of replicated over to BigView? Absolutely. I mean, I would ask, I, you know, we kind of like throw it back and say of, you know, 
perspective uh, consumers or whatever before they actually say, I'm going to subscribe to this? What are, what are the, like the top questions that everybody asks about the software? And then I, you know, whatever those are, and I'll let you think about those, but uh, whatever those are, if you're, if you're someone who is already a big view affiliate uh, and, you know, like, well, I'm going to create a video on that because that's going to answer somebody's problem. That's going to, that's going to solve their issue before they make a purchase. And meanwhile, here's the affiliate link. And so you can get, uh, you know, whatever the affiliate commission is f uh, for that. I just, I think if you put yourself into someone else's shoes and say, what are their problems? that creates your content that's that's what i tell all of my clients for podcasts is like identify the person you're speaking to just like jim said like who is who is it for and then figure out what their problems are that is your content solve their problems right yeah because nobody cares about us I, I mean that's what it really comes down to right what's the problem and what's the solution you offer and and your solution may not be the right solution for them but you're at least giving them an option. What a lot of people uh, don't think about as well is when it comes to creating videos that are, you know, problem solving type videos, you, you, people may not always like and comment, but they're watching. And at some point they may say, you know, that Chris Stone guy really knows a lot about live streaming and podcasting. He's shown me his expertise. I want to work with him. And, and we've seen that happen, you know, time and time again. So think about how do I answer people's questions and help them help them succeed, right? That's why Chris and I are in this is to help others succeed. It's not about us. Perfect, perfect. All right. So, I mean, if you guys had to give, you know, one tip to someone who's looking to become affiliate, who's looking to you know, dive into this world, where should they start? To dive into the world of of content uh, of, of creating content or um, one tip, um, whatever is holding you back, get past it. Because you know, a long time ago, and probably three years ago, when Jim and I were first starting this this whole thing out, um, we had a guy that uh, that we had on our show, and he was talking about this virtual presentation, right? And he said, and of course, you know, pandemic and everything was happening. So it's sort of hypercharged and turbocharged this whole thing. But he said this, your virtual presentation is the new suit. And so if you think about it like that, and I don't mean, you know, I, when I say suit, I mean, you know, not necessarily the tie or whatever, but like, this is how people will perceive you you know, yeah. And it could mean qualify or disqualify, which is fine. But if you don't have this together, if you don't have... A, at least a clear way for you to be heard, which is the, the number one thing is you got to make sure your audio is rock solid. That doesn't mean you need a $400 microphone. That just needs, that just means you need to have a microphone that's close to your mouth and that you're in a room that isn't big and noisy and your voice isn't bouncing off of everything. So it's not, it's not a matter of expense. It's just a matter of being able to be heard well. And then in, in terms of being seen, you don't have to spend, I mean, the, the cost of your virtual presentation is less than an Xbox. You can get your, you can use your phone. There's great software that you can use for your phone, but get it together. You know, every day we, Jim and I work with people who come in as guests on things like this. And you would believe how many nose hairs and ceilings fans that we see uh, every day from people who don't have their acts together from a virtual presentation standpoint. So it's not something that is expensive, but it's something you need to really pay attention to. And that is, you know, making sure that you can be heard first and foremost and that you can be seen. Yeah. And I would just add, I think Chris kind of hit on it, but we, uh, we hear this term a lot in, in our uh, industry, I guess you say it's called gas gear acquisition syndrome. And people feel like I've got to have the latest, you know, Apple computer and I've got to have the best camera in the world and all this stuff before I get started. But here's, here's the flip side of that. If you were to go spend all that money and fail, you're going to feel even worse. So get started with what you have. Right. And like Chris said, we always say the most important thing about video is audio. Excellent. Excellent. Great. So uh, we're coming up to the, the hour mark. 
So I just want to thank uh, our guests who have been fantastic today. Chris Stone from Deal Casters. Thank you. Jim Fuchs, Deal Casters, and Jim Fuchs, few Jim Fuchs Marketing. And Donna Howitz from uh, Big View, our marketing representative from Big View. Um, I encourage everybody out there to check out uh, Deal Casters. There's a lot of quality content on there to reach out to Chris and Jim, to reach out to Donna for any uh, information that you want to know about our affiliates program. You can contact our support channel as well, and they'll put you in touch with Donna. Um, thanks to our, our fantastic audience for being with us today. Um, and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. And we look forward to seeing you on future workshops. Uh, we have uh, one lineup for next week. Um, so with, with all that, just don't forget about the giveaway from uh, Chris and uh, Jim. It's uh, three users will, will, will merit for that. And it's not, it's uh, just to, to, to let you know, I'm not sure if it's the first three, but I think uh, Jim and Chris will see once they go through and they'll choose three at random from the people that come in to make it a, an equitable uh, chance for everybody to merit that. So uh, please, please go ahead and, and send them at Dealcasters uh, your big view uh, message. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. It's really been Thank an absolute you. pleasure. It was an honor. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, All everyone. the best. Okay. Take care. Mm -hmm. Teleprompter, create videos you're proud of. Easily trim your video by selecting the words where you want to start and end. Color your presentation with automatic subtitles and highlighting keywords. Add your brand logo. Add music for an emotional touch. Add your contact info on an animated business card on all your videos. Easily replace green screen with an image or a video loop. Stand out with a web page with your logo, your video at the center, and personalized button for visitors to interact. It's one tap to simultaneously upload your videos on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Always know what to say next with the Big View teleprompter.